Hello everyone, we're picking back up with page 83, entitled The Magic Weed. When he looked at the loaves of bread, Gilgamesh was desolate. Oh, Utnapishtim, where shall I go now? Whither shall my steps lead me? Numbness grasps, grasps at my limbs, and the earth holds my feet. But Utnapishtim spoke only to the boatman. Take him to the washing place. Let him throw off the animal skins that hide his fine figure. Give him a fresh tunic and a gold band for his head, so that he may be dressed suitably for a king. Then I will grant him a favor. I will decree that his garment shall remain fresh and not be soiled for all the days of his journey home. But as for you, Urshanabi, you have betrayed us. You have disgraced the crossing and the landing place. May you never be seen here again. May the quay hate you. May the shore turn you away. Urshanabi took Gilgamesh to the washing place, as he was told. He repaired the ferry boat. He entered it. And with Gilgamesh beside him, he pushed off from the shore. The wife of uh, Utnapishtim scolded him thus. Oh, husband, the young man has suffered all sorts of pain and hardship only to see you and talk to you. How can you send him off like this? What will you give him from this place so that he may return to his city in honor? Utnapishtim called the boat back to the quay. Gilgamesh, I will tell you something, namely a secret of the gods. At the bottom of this river, there grows a weed. It bears a flower having the fragrance of a rose. And like a rose too, it has a thorny stem that will prick and scratch the hands. Nevertheless, if any mortal can grasp this weed, if he can pluck it and eat some morsel of it, youth will return to him as the springtime returns to the year. This secret, I tell you. Gilgamesh shouted loud with joy. Urshanabi, we shall grasp the weed and pull it loose. We shall return to the city of Uruk, you and I. We shall share the weed among the aged of the city. And they will regain their youth and strength. We will call it the old become young again. Beware, O Gilgamesh. This is a trap for your wayward heart. The waters of river are death. and No one may enter them and still live. Old men will become strong again. Grandmothers become maids. Instead, you will be overcome by the bitter water, O king. Come. Let the weed stay where, it, stay where it grows. But if I can grasp the weed, it will restore my strength and I will live. Take the boat out on the water, Urshanabi, and wait for me. Gilgamesh stood on the quay and tied stones, heavy stones, to his feet. Slowly, he entered the river. And the stones pulled him down. The water was thick and full of brine, and he could not see. But such was the fragrance of the flower that it penetrated everywhere. Gilgamesh was drawn to it. He touched it. He pulled it out by its roots, and even though it pricked and scratched his hands, he cut the stones from his feet, and the water rejected him and threw him uh, to the far shore. There, Urshanabi waited, and they set out across the land and walked for an unknown distance. They crossed mountains. They came to the sacred forest and passed through it and reached the twilight. They sat down to rest and tempted by curiosity, they tasted a morsel of the plant. Immediately, all weariness dropped from them. Let's go on, they said to each other. And now, guided by the rising and sinking of the sun, they walk a distance of 20 double hours. Finding a fresh spring of water, they decided to rest and sleep. Gilgamesh threw off his tunic, the gift from the ancestor, and bathed himself in the pool. As he stepped out, clean and refreshed, he saw a serpent at his feet. The creature grasped the magic plant and slithered off through the grass. Gilgamesh pursued it with loud cries and shouts, but the snake entered a hole in the earth and went underground, leaving behind only the... Uh, the old and withered skin that it had dropped in regaining its youth. Gilgamesh beat his breast. He wrung his hands. 
O Urshanabi, for whom uh, have my hands become tired, my cheeks wan, for whom is my blood spent, for a snake, for an earth prowler, O oh, my magic weed, O oh, my flower, who will bring them back to me from under the earth? Why did I leave them at the quay of the carpenter? They walk through, th um, they walk through three settings and risings of the sun. They came to the river Euphrates and washed their hands in its water. Above them loomed the towered temples and the high walls of Uruk. Come, Urshanabi, Gilgamesh began to run. He made Urshanabi climb the walls with him. Behold, he said, is it not the, no the noblest of cities? Observe the walls, if they, if they be not made of, of all fire bricks. Inspect them, how they are molded together. Note the foundation terrace. Look out over the extent of the city, O boatman. See how is it arranged. One third being houses and dwellings, one third groves of trees, and one third the precinct of the temples. Judge for yourself now if it is not laid out by the seven wise men.